All right, guys. So I thought I'd get back on this uh, this 10 double E and start chipping away at some of these problems. So um, I did go back. Um, I checked my line voltage, and I'm just uh, like 240.1, something like that. I think that that might be a little bit high. This machine was set up for 208 at the uh, factory where I got it from. So I'll go in here and check the uh, the voltages. I just got to look up where I measure that and um, and then make adjustments to the taps on those two transformers for those two, um, I think they're C16Js, the, the, the two big tubes uh, where you connect up, that's where you do the adjustment or, you know, uh, change the taps. Uh, the other thing that I did do also was, um, and you know, I kind of thought about this and I don't know why the first time I fired it up, it didn't dawn on me. But if you remember, I had this issue with reverse, right? So, you know, that was a uh, couple of viewers uh, let me know that when it says reverse speed and there's a knob, you turn it and it changes the reverse speed. <laughs> so, so that works. I still have this issue at the low RPM. It's a little erratic, but it's actually really slow speed, so uh, I'll, I'll look at that. But this works perfect. That's 3,000 RPM. Pretty quiet, I gotta say. So looks pretty good there. So I think the next step, um, I'm just going to verify those voltages and see where we're at, um, and then I'm going to look at that gearbox or that rattling um, noise that comes out of when I have it set up for threading. A bunch of viewers have told me that there's a set of banjo gears in the back under that cover. I'll pull that off and see, and hopefully it's just an adjustment and there's not a busted tooth or something in there. So. Uh, fingers crossed that that's going to be a quick, uh, a quick fix. So I'm going to shut this off right now and then get set up to test those voltages. Okay guys, after spending, uh, I'm gonna say, let's see, it's one o'clock now, probably about two hours um, monkeying around with this thing. So what I did was, if you remember that uh, contactor right there was doing a little bit of arcing. So I took the contactor out, I thoroughly cleaned the contacts, put that back in, didn't solve the problem. I came over here and I replaced the small tube because I looked online and it looked like, you know, that potentially was an issue, that the small tube, uh, even though it's glowing, could be uh, defective. That did not fix the problem. And of course, the problem I'm talking about is that surging at very low RPM. So uh, what I found is, let me show you here. So it's in reverse, turn all the way down, and then I'm speeding it up. Okay. Okay. And it goes max out at 4,000. 
tight, well almost 4,000. So that's what I have going on. So now if I shift it to forward position, same thing. I've got the speed turned all the way down and I brought it up to, there's 200. Now, I can't get all the way up to 4,000, almost. I'm not too worried about that, but let me tell you what I found. So, um, I took this box off. I checked, uh, you know what, I'll, what I'll do is let me pull that box back off and I'm gonna show you what's inside there so that you can see what I'm talking about. All right, guys, so here's this box, the spindle module box. I removed this screw and that screw right there. So now I can pull this box off and show you what's inside. Okay, so there were suggestions, recommendations, things I found a practical machinist and so forth that said, you know, look at these diodes here. They could be a problem. Some guy talked about all the capacitors being bad, all the resistors being bad, and, you know, and I guess with the age, that's, you know, a, a possibility. But for the purposes of what I'm doing here, I I said, let, let me assume that those those things are good. So I went through, I took every one of these diodes out of the circuit, and I tested it with my meter, and they all read almost exactly the same, whether in the circuit or out of the circuit, which is, let me just get you a number here so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so in that direction right there, we're reading 564, 0. 0.564, I guess. Uh, and then in this direction, we're reading a, uh, an open circuit. So now if I go to this diode, which is actually installed the opposite of the other diode, right there. Uh, let's see, we got... So it uh, settles down to the same number, but it's in the circuit. So, you know, you're measuring either, you know, it could be like... Um, you know, those caps that are interfering with the reading. So let's check it again. Oops, sorry for the fingers. I'm trying to do this one-handed. So let me get this guy in here. All right, and then we'll get this guy right here. So we're showing an open circuit there. As you know, diodes should have an open circuit generally in one direction, and some acceptable reading in the other direction. Okay, so out of the circuit, see 552, which was, I think this one was 559. Anyway, I checked them all, and they all checked within a couple tenths of each other. Then what I did was I looked at this drawing that's inside here, and it gives you the orientation of each diode. So I just verified all the diodes were incorrect. They were installed correctly. The other thing it tells you is the potentiometer adjustments. So um, if you notice, it says turn both pots extreme counterclockwise, turn compensation one half turn clockwise, set the spindle to 200 RPMs with the spindle control, which I did. Then it said load the spindle motor to approximately 18 amps. I, I didn't measure that, but what I did was uh, I put a big old glove on that spindle and grabbed a hold of it and tried to stop it, and it just basically stayed the same speed. Um, but this comp right here was cranked basically all the way up. And uh, so if you see in here, it tells you the initial setting is approximately one half turn. So it, that pot right there has, is almost a full turn and it was just about maxed out. So what I did was I backed it to the fully counterclockwise, 
and then turned it about, oh, uh, I'm going to say a quarter of a turn at a time and tested it. And what you just saw before was uh, this is about just a little bit more than a quarter of a turn. The spindle holds its speed. It doesn't do that chattering, uh, you know, ramping on and off uh, at very low speed. Um, however, it it doesn't completely turn off if you turn the um, speed control all the way down. I don't know if that's normal or not. So it it turns very slow, not enough to read on the tack, but it doesn't surge or uh, behave abnormally. Now, I'm guessing that after I adjusted the comp that I probably would need to adjust the max speed, which is this guy right there, max speed, to get it up to the 4,000 RPM number. So I, I'm actually not going to do that. Um, what's kind of interesting, this lathe right here, I, not, I was actually poking around in here just uh, checking some voltages and stuff and comparing them with the other machine. And they're, they're basically everything checked exactly the same. This machine maxes out at a little bit over 2,000, even though it is a 4,000 RPM machine. And what I learned is, uh, and I checked the uh, module on this one, and the max speed is turned down quite a bit. In talking to one of the old timers that was that actually worked in the model shop in the factory where these lathes came from, he told me that their safety department actually required them to, you know, basically detune these things so that they couldn't run at the full 4,000 RPM for whatever reason. So um, th I thought that was an interesting, I'm actually just closing this door back up. So I thought that was pretty interesting that they, uh, they didn't want folks uh, running these things all the way up. Um, now, of course, it appears that someone might have gotten into the other machine that I'm working on now and and monkeyed around with that and cranked it back up to uh, you know the max the max RPM. So anyway, long story short, I'm going to leave it the way that it is. And if it maxes out at 3,500, close to 4,000, that's fine. I'm probably never even going to run it up that fast anyway. So um, so all right, uh, if we get back to the other machine, I'll reinstall this uh, module. Verify that it works again, and then the next thing to dive into will be the uh, those uh, that gear adjustment behind that plate in, in the um, on the spindle uh, drive side. I'll bring you back in a minute. Okay, guys, I'm going to try and see if I can't get this plate off without uh, taking the belts off. I don't, I don't know. I've never had these plates off uh, before. You know, there's, there was a comment that, you know, I'm not doing a quote-unquote refurb, but just like a cosmetic uh, deal on this, you know, this machine. Um, to some extent, that, that, that is true. Uh, however, with that being said, I basically have gone through everything that I think, you know, needs to be looked at when I had it all apart and make sure I replaced the, uh, you know, the, the parts that I found that were bad. The, of course, the other thing is when you take something like this completely apart and you clean and free up stuck things and get junk out of everything and, uh, you know, kind of get it back to, you know, um, a, a state where it's, uh, you know, not just loaded with filth and junk, you know, the machine will operate better. There's no, no question about that. So I, I, I tend to believe that, you know, when you refurbish something, you don't have to replace every moving part just for the sake of replacing every moving part. You fix what needs to be fixed, and you clean it up, and, you know, get it in a, in a position that's, um, you know, it's close to, I don't know, new. I don't know if I want to say new, but you know what I'm saying. So anyway, all right, I got to go get another Allen wrench to reach in there, and we'll see how it goes. You know, guys, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna take these belts off. They're just kind of in the way, and, um, 
you know, I think it'll make my life a little bit easier. So I'm going to go get a 9 sixteenths that I can loosen up the uh, adjusting. So I'm kind of hoping that we're just going to see an adjustment that's necessary and not a broken gear or, you know, horrendously damaged bearing or something. But we'll see if we don't know. All right, let's see what's happening in here. That's quite a bit of slop right there. I don't see any broken teeth, but that, those teeth are almost on top of each other. I don't know if you can see this. Let me get you a little bit closer to see what I'm talking about here. So that gear right there, and I don't know if that's supposed to be engaged or not. My guess is yes. So I was looking in the book, and the book says three thousandths uh, clearance. So let me let me monkey around with that adjustment it looks like this guy is not going to move so i have to go figure out what it is that we uh what it is that we do to adjust that okay i'll bring you back so guys i don't know if you can see right here is a like a little i say it's probably an oil deflecting shield of some sort to keep the uh oil is splashing up from the gear you know on the gears from getting out so we'll get that off um we got one screw loose i just got to get this other screw loose funny when i was growing up everything were nuts and bolts and screws now everything are fasteners so somewhere along the line the definition or the term that we use has migrated from nuts bolts and screws to fasteners i guess I guess you can't make a mistake if you say fastener. All right, so just looking here, I see like a little bit of, you know, metallic material there, probably from these gears not meshing great. So hopefully we're not looking at damage in there. All right, so I'm going to go get a uh, little rag, clean some stuff off, and then get this gear off and then do that adjustment. All right, so I'm going to just clean off some of this uh, junk here so that we don't have a leak when we put it back on. I mean, there is a gasket on this plate, this, the plate that goes right here, um, but I don't think it's going to see a ton of oil. Now, I'm going to just look down inside, see if I see any other maybe gears that are, you know, in rough shape. So I know you can't see that, but I'm looking down there. I can see gears down there, and I'm just kind of looking to see what's happening. And I don't really see any broken teeth or crappy-looking things. Everything looks pretty good. All right, let's see here. All right, I'm happy with what I'm seeing right now. So it looks like no 
damage is probably just going to be this adjustment. So let's get this gear off of here. Okay. So I had gone back to the book, and you know what? Let me clean this lens off here a little bit. I think it's a little foggy looking. Okay, I think that's better. So let's see. Um, if you look right here, these two screws, fasteners. Uh, so those are the, um, the fasteners that the book tells you uh, to loosen to adjust this, this, uh, the gear spacing. So I got to get in there and loosen those two guys up. So I'm not quite sure how this, if it just kind of swings up, like this thing is clamped down there. Uh, Cause it looks like that thing that I just loosened is a clamp. Uh, let's see here. Well, I want to be really, really careful taking screws out of here I might stuff a rag down there because I think if something goes down in there, um, it's going to be a very, very sad kind of moment. Uh, let's see if I can't get a little pry bar in there and just put a little bit of force on it to see if it's just a little stuck. Okay, guys, what I found is I just put a little bit of pressure on here. I didn't, I, I just had forgotten to turn the camera off or back on. So this is the situation. We're just going to pop that up. So I'm, I'm going to put that gear back on and then move it around to get that 3,000s clearance that they're talking about. So I just put a little bit of pressure here. I'm thinking I should be able to close that right up. And it's probably a little tight. So, so anyway, right here, you see that's... That's an unadjustable uh, situation between the relationship between these two gears. This is the gear right, right there that's on the banjo. And if you look right here, so now I have it adjusted. And I took a little three thousandths wire. And it just barely fits in there. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, let's see. So anyway, it's where it needs to be. So my guess is that when this thing crashed, there's a really good likelihood that the uh, that forces push that uh, this uh, this gear that swings on that um, adjustable um, mount probably pushed it down. And um, even though these bolts here were tight, it still um you know was able to push it down I'm, I'm just guessing i see what you guys think you know i'd be interested to know what your opinions might be so let me get this thing buttoned up and we'll see if we got uh the noise problem solved all right guys i got this plate back on we're going to get these belts back on tightened up and uh we will uh fire this thing up and see what we think I think some, somebody, I'm not sure who it was, thought that I had this pulley on the wrong side of this belt. And I went back, I checked the book, I went, did a bunch of image searches on Google. I checked both of my other 10 E's, and they're, they're all set up this way. So I would like to believe that this is correct. So that's the way I'm going to do it. All right, so what we should do is get power on this thing and let's see what kind of a uh, noise reduction we've got. 
All right, the green light is on. Let's see what we've got. All right, so turn my speed controls all the way down. Tools up there. We have it set right now for feeding right hand threads. And we get the Gonna be threading at more than a thousand RPMs. So there's the uh, nut and gauge. So I might, must be set for quite a dramatic uh, speed on these. <laughs> that is really fast. So let's see. Um, let's see. I'll come up this way. I'm gonna turn this thing down a little bit. Okay, and how about if we, well, I'm gonna do that and let's change this to that setting right there. Okay, so there's something a little bit. I mean, it's still a little rattly in there. I don't know, you tell me guys, what do you think? If you put any kind of a load on it, it stops. Still got that sticky business over here. All right, let's see. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely will be threading on the slower side anyway. I don't know, I still hear noise. What do you guys think? Let me know, and it definitely still sounds like it's coming from up here. I don't see anything right there. All right. Definitely think it's a lot less noisy. Um, all right, so. You know, just for ha-has, why don't I go over to my other lathe and see, which I think I did do when this one was pretty quiet. Um, let me turn this guy on. We have to wait for our one minute timer. This is a really nice machine. All right, so that's 500 RPMs. So if we, uh, let me get this thing into threading mode and we'll turn it on. Okay, so it's in threading mode. You know, it's definitely noisier when you're threading. Pay no attention to that. <laughs> that's my, that's my uh, 5C collet. So now,
I mean, you hear a little something in there, but it's nothing like the other one. All right. So, I don't know. I don't know what it could be, but definitely tons quieter, not in threading gear. All right. One thing I'm going to show you, too. Um, so, a viewer, subscriber, who's become a friend of mine, we've communicated quite a bit, he has moved along to me this part that the, you know, the, the, uh, the clamp for the th uh, taper attachment. So it kind of goes on here. I'd have to loosen up this to get it where it needs to be. So I'd imagine you squeeze that in between these two guys and that lo locks it in. So check this out. This is an aluminum... I guess maybe a, just a remake that somebody has done and the paint job on it is perfect. So I'm not gonna paint that because even though it's a different color, it's gonna be a, its own little thing for this lathe. So Will, can't thank you enough. That's an amazing piece. And not only did it have you know the the casting but it came with the clamp part on the on the bottom and the, and the hardware so really really nice amazing folks out there in in our world all right so again one last try i don't know if i put the cover on maybe i won't hear it maybe i'll take a peek at the gears up in here see what we have Okay, guys, thanks for watching. We'll uh, keep it going along, but at least I got that drive problem out of the way and um, the reverse speed, which there was nothing wrong with, which just was uh, a little of a brain fart on that. Thanks, guys. I didn't show you, but one thing that I did is I took this cover off and I checked inside the gearbox. I'd already done that before in, in the headstock, and everything did look fine. But what, one of the things I did do is try to see was there a difference in the sound between running right hand and left hand threads? Because when I looked in the top here, I could see that uh, there's a shift fork in there and you're using a different set of gears in the headstock. Uh, there's no difference in sound. So whatever's going on in terms of maybe, you know, um, gear issues, the noisy gears, I think is in here. Now, like I said before, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'll put the covers on and see if, you know, it gets more like the other lathe we'll see and um but other than that the with the amount of threading at you know that you do at higher speeds i don't really know that it's going to be an issue but i just would like it to be quieter so at some point i might tear into that figure it out i don't know all right guys we'll see you later